still the radio star. Hey guys, um, I just got done training. You're shocked. I know. Um, big on lift, strong on awesome. That's what my shirt says. Uh, anyway, just uh, a couple of quick updates for you. I um, I'm gonna go home tomorrow, and I'll fill you in on why. Um, nothing bad, so don't worry for those of you who have listened to my vlogs about my dad. Um, but first, I wanted to give you a quick update on my like my weight today, just randomly. Um, I was down to 185.2 today, which is good. Yesterday was a light day um, in terms of training. Um, today wasn't too bad either, actually, to be honest with you. wasn't bad at all. Um, so a little less inflammation, which is good, right? So I'm not making any changes to my macros right now. I did talk to my nutrition um, guy just to get his opinion on that of whether or not we wanted to make any changes or not. You can see my red sweatshirt on the back. That's such a fun color, like Christmas. Um yeah, so things are going good there. Training was really good today. A lot of burpees today. Um, less than 50 though. It wasn't, I mean, it looked way worse on paper, but there were a ton of lunges and they're weighted. So with weight today, um, typically you would do them with like a 35 pound dumbbell, but I, I just, I can't with that 35. It's just a little bit too heavy for, for lunges. Um, you know, 25. Yeah. A single. Yeah. Like double with 35. I actually can do, um, cause you're kind of equal balanced, right. Um, with the weight in both hands, but not with a single. Um, but I don't have 25 dumb dumbbells because you know, supply chain issues. Um, but I do have a 20 pound slam ball. So I just held on to that and did my lunges. Um, so tomorrow my legs are going to be pretty blown up. They're already blown up. Like my stretchy pants are tight right now. Like my, the pants that I wear to work out in. Um, but a real heavy back day, which is good because I do need to develop upper back musculature from my shoulder surgery situation moments. Um, but yeah, good day overall. Busy day at work. Lots of reporting. Oh my God, the spreadsheets today. Crazy. Um, lots of phone calls. Um, all those types of things. Lots of things being pushed my way that aren't my problem. That's the other thing too. Um but yeah, anyway, so uh, I'm going to go home tomorrow. Um, I'm going to go see my dad. Um, he has not been able to be placed in rehab. And it's not it's it's no one's fault. But they're having trouble finding a place that will accept him. And um, there's a couple of reasons. Like, there's a couple of factors. So Louis body dementia is pretty complex. Um like all dementias are complex, like Alzheimer's is complex and Parkinson's dementia is complex and a lot of diseases are complex, right? And, um, you know, and because my dad suffered from hallucinations, you know, now over a month ago for, you know, a few days and then was having some issues with like aggression and anxiety, um, they put him on some medication now and he's been really good for like almost three weeks, which is really good. Um, but that medication is some pretty heavy duty stuff, right? And um, I think it scares a lot of people to have a patient who has this type of dementia, who's on these types of meds, like in their facility, because ultimately my dad is a risk to, to the staff and potentially to other patients, especially if he were, um, if he were to have like another episode I will call it of you know you know pretty significant hallucinations you know and aggression and so um yeah so his social worker has been really great um I cannot thank her enough for all the things that she's doing for my dad right now um she started you know she really started thinking outside the box about where he could potentially go and um I have my older brother lives just uh, west of the Twin Cities. He lives in the southwest suburbs of the Twin Cities. And so he's about 45 minutes um, from the border of uh, Wisconsin. And I live, you know, obviously like six hours away from my folks up north. But, you know, really three hours anywhere around me is, you know, I can be in almost all the other parts of the state, right? Just because of the way the state is shaped. So, um, so we're just, we're just exploring some other places, you know, um, and it may, like I said, it may mean that he's not going to be able to, to get into a facility that's in his hometown or, you know, within an hour, it might be something like two hours away. And, and I think that that's okay. As long as he's getting the care that he needs, like I'm not concerned about the short-term situation and the short-term nature of this is also one of the complexities that I'm, I'm learning more about is that if he was going to be in for the long haul, 
they would be more likely to accept him as a patient. Um, so that's not where my dad is right now. Although we know logically he's going to need long-term care. My dad, and this is a whole other thing, right? Is that my dad has been medically cleared for discharge and legally he could walk out of the hospital tomorrow and go home. The thing stopping him is he is physically not able to do that because he is, he's still weak. He still needs to have people help him get up, you know, and like to go to the bathroom and do things and stop and sit in his chair and whatever. So that's the only thing stopping him actually. Uh, so that's a whole other thing. Right. And, and it's a little bit stressful thinking that like, if he were to get enough physical therapy in the hospital to be strong enough to leave, you know, to like walk outside the door and get an Uber and go home, like that's, that's a little stressful for me, but, um, we're just taking that one, one day at a time. It doesn't look like that day will come anytime soon, which is really good because he does really need to get into more of a, you know, shorter term rehab so we can start to evaluate him for a long-term care. But at the end of the short-term rehab, if the physical therapists say like, you know, he, he can go home, like my dad's going to go home. Right. And then we have to unfortunately kind of let him crash and burn. Um, a few times um, before they'll be able to kind of intervene and, you know, kind of help him with that decision of getting into a long-term care. So, so we have that going on. And then I've learned so much about insurance. So um, for those of you who are not in the United States, um, my dad has Medicare, which is what you can elect, um, you know, for coverage, right? When, once you're retired, um, there could be other ways you can get on Medicare. I'm not sure if it's just simply an, an age, retirement age thing or not, actually, to be honest with you. Um, but then there's other things too, like Medicaid and there's state medical assistance and there's private insurance, right? And so my dad has Medicare, plus he's a veteran. So um, he has benefits through the VA as well. Um, but my dad doesn't carry secondary insurance. And so this is a note to all the people who are my age make sure that you save enough money now to have some kind of secondary care when you are retired. So future Karen, like you need to set aside money, like, so you don't run into this problem, you know? And so, um, so because he doesn't have that. And I think the reason why is I don't think my dad ever thought there would be something that either Medicare or the VA wouldn't be covering for him. And unfortunately we are in that situation right now, but, um, his social worker, angel, angel social worker, she's actually helping him get, um, like, you know, helping him get his name on a list, you know, and get an application in for like state medical assistance. And so that should help because one of the other reasons why, we're having trouble with some of these facilities is that they really like to have people who have two insurances, right? That carry two, two policies or two have two different coverages, right? So that could be Medicare and like Blue Cross. It could be Medicare and Medicaid. It could be Medicare and medical assistance. You know, it could be Medi Medicare and cash, right? You know, like they, it's, it's really, it's really cutthroat, right? And it's, there's so, there's so much, right? That goes into it. And so anyway, so, just if you're my age or younger, just make sure that you keep that in mind. Um, and who knows, right? Like what things look like in 30 years when you're getting ready to retire. But um, it, this may not be an issue, right? They could have a totally different system at that point, you know? And so, but anyway, so that's where my dad's at right now. But he's doing well. Um, he does not know that I'm coming home. I did not tell him that um, this week um, because I'm not sure if my dad is aware of like, time right now so like he knows he talks to me and he knows he's been in the hospital for like now it's like five weeks or more than five weeks maybe six weeks this weekend it'll be six weeks he knows that but he doesn't necessarily seem to pick up on when the last time he talked to me was so I didn't want to tell him like oh I'm coming home on Saturday and then like tell him that yesterday and then today he wakes up and he's like where's Karen you know like that's you know what I mean? Like that's, I didn't want that to happen and have him be confused by that. And so I'm not telling him that I'm coming home. So I'm going to go see him on Sunday. They did lift the restrictions in the hospitals. Um, so he's able to have two visitors every day. So obviously I will be one of them. Um, so I'm going to spend an entire week up North. Unfortunately it is going to be like 40 below zero. I'm not lying about that. Um, it is cold here. It is what nine degrees here, uh, right now. It's, I mean, it's nighttime. It's what is it? 10 to seven central time. So, um, yeah, so it's gonna be really, really cold, but um, 
I'm going to stay with my mom. My parents are divorced. I think I've mentioned that to you. Um, and then I'll probably talk to my dad's wife while I'm there and see if she wants to go see my dad too. I'll, you know, go pick her up and take her. Um, if she's, if she's feeling up to it. So, and that's, that's for a different day. That's for a different day, that whole situation. But, um, yeah, so looking forward to going home. Um, going to take Kitty, going to go home. It's going to be fun. Um, anyway, so a little update about my house and about why adulting sucks. Uh, so a few days ago, maybe five days ago, I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you at this point how many days ago it was. I noticed that the sink in the kitchen, like my faucet, when I turned the faucet on the water, the water was running differently. Like it almost like it had air in it or something. Um, and I was like, what is this? Like it sounded different and like all this stuff. And I have a, um, what they call an undermount sink. And I have like a farmer sink. And uh, the woman who I bought the house from spent an ungodly amount of money like renovating the kitchen and the bathroom, which I am thankful for because those are the two most expensive rooms in your house to renovate. Um, so she had this beautiful like, you know, stainless steel like sink put in and it's undermount. So it's real, it's flush with the counter. So like the sink is under the countertops. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. So anyway, I wasn't, I was like, what is that? You know, well, this is the first winter that I've lived in this house. And so I thought maybe it was just like a winter time thing, but the bathroom sink is fine. So, you know, the shower is fine. The dishwasher's running fine, like all these things. And so I'm like, what in the hell, you know? And so I didn't think much of it. And my mom was like, well, maybe it's like the filter, like, cause sometimes on the, um, I think all sinks probably have this, like in the part, you know, the faucet part, right? You can unscrew the bottom usually, and there's usually like a little filter that's in there and like it gets like shit in it, right? You know, from the minerals and stuff in your water. So my mom was like, it's probably just that. And I was like, okay. And that was yesterday. And so today I woke up and came out and, you know, Kitty was really fussy because we ran out of Tiki Cat. And so that's been his jam lately. And I ordered some from Chewy, which is supposed to be delivered today. And then that got delayed. And I was like, ah, you know, my cat needs some Tiki Cat, you know. And so I ended up just doing a curbside pickup. We have a Bentley's PetSmart in my neighborhood. Um, and so I went to Bentley's and I picked up, ordered a bunch of Tiki Cat for him. And, and you know, went and picked it up for him today um, uh, during the day um, when I had a break from work. So... So I did that or whatever. So anyway, he was a fussy or whatever. So I was trying to get him to just eat his regular, you know, cat food, his fancy feast, which he likes every other day. Um, but then I ran the sink. I'm trying to think of the order of operations here. What did I do? So I like got some yogurt out or whatever, and you know, dished up my yogurt for breakfast. And then I was cleaning out the sink and I turned on the faucet and I flipped on the garbage disposal you know, let it run or whatever, shut everything off. And then I was standing by the fridge and then Kitty though was by the sink, like by the cabinet. So my, I have under cabinet, like under sink cabinets. And so, and he was standing like by the corner of one of the doors, not the middle where it opens, but like the, the other side. And he was like really interested in something. And I was like, what are you doing? You know? And then I heard like a noise and I was like, what in the hell is that sound? And then I realized that there was water dripping from the cabinet. And I thought maybe I had spilled something like on the sink and it was like coming over the top of the sink, right? And dripping down the front of the cabinet onto the floor. Shit, no, that is not what was happening. So I opened up the cat and there's water everywhere under the cabinet. And thank God that I have um, some like buckets, like tup like Rubbermaid, not like Rubbermaid, they're like from Target or whatever, but they're like, all my cleaning supplies and stuff are in them. So they're all full of water. And there was like a, um, there was a, um, like a, like a clear, like Rubbermaid thing that the woman I bought the house from, she actually, that was my chapstick. She left here because it had like, um, stuff for the sink in it, you know, or whatever. And so I was like, oh my God. So I'm taking all these things out, like in my target baskets have like, they're like weaved. So they're not solid. So like I pick it up and there's water spilling all over the floor. <laughs> like it was a mess. Right. And so I threw a towel down to like dry it off or whatever. And I turned on the sink just to see what was happening. And I at first thought it was the garbage disposal. So like when the garbage disposal goes up into the drain, right, there's kind of like an O-ring or something that's there, like a seal. And I was like, oh my God, it's like the seal on this thing is leaking. That's what I'm thinking in my mind, you know? And I was like, like, oh, that sucks, you know? And I just was like, well, you know, maybe I could just fix it myself. Like take the garbage disposal out, put a new seal on it, whatever. And then I, I don't know what made me think of it 
But I turned the water on again and I looked under the sink and it was like, it's not the drain because I put a cereal dish under the water so the water wouldn't go down. And I turned on this, the faucet again and I looked and there's water just spraying everywhere. So I'm like, fuck, 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 fuck. This is why I never wanted to buy a house like this shit, right? So I'm supposed to go home tomorrow. Okay, so this is like a thing. So I turn off the water, whatever, clean everything up, you know, text my neighbor downstairs. I'm like, you know, do you have a plumber? Like something's going on up here. I, you know, I was like, I wonder if the pipes are frozen, you know, and she, and I was like, is your ceiling okay in your kitchen? You know, because like I would have to pay to have her ceiling fixed if the water damages her ceiling, you know? And so that's a whole other thing. She's like, no, the ceiling's fine. I was like, okay, great. You know, she gives me the name of a plumber. I call them. Um, talk to the kid, you know, I was like, you know, I have no idea what's going on. Like I, and he's like, the pipes are probably frozen. And I was like, no, 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 no. My kitchen wall where my pipes are faces South, which is where the sun is. And I was like, and it's 65 degrees in here. Like it's not frozen. And he was just like, yeah, we're actually seeing a lot of that right now. I was like, it hasn't even been that cold. Like, I'm just like, what? You know, but one of the things about this house, right, built in 1925, there's no insulation in this house, right? So it's a different type of cold here, like, you know, um, in terms of like the pipes and all the stuff. And so I was like, okay, cool. And he's like, open up the cabinet, leave them open, leave your heat on. Or, you know, I told him, I was like, listen, unless you guys can get here today, like I'm going to be gone for a week. Like, you know, he's like, leave the door open, keep the heat on, you know, turn the water off while you're gone. He's like, it'll probably you know it might resolve itself right you know and I was like oh I hope so otherwise um I was able to schedule an appointment for uh next Monday uh when I get back um just to have them come out and look if it's not resolved by then um so yeah like this sucks this is why I didn't want to buy a house like <laughs> this is kind of shit um but yeah but anyway so the the company that my neighbor recommended does a really good job they are a little bit more expensive I think than the average but um, the, the work will be done really well. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. But that was my morning, you know, but I am, I'm excited to go home. Um, pretty much packed. I just have to make a, a quick list to make sure I don't forget anything. I forget stupid shit like phone chargers and like laptop chargers. And, you know, and I have two laptops, right? I have my, my personal one that will come with me. And then I have my, uh, my work laptop that'll have to come with me too. I have two cell phones because I have a personal and a work cell phone. Um, I obviously do not mix business and pleasure. That's pretty much what this means. Um, you know, like I have my watch, which needs a charger. I have everything needs a charger. Like it's crazy. So anyway, so that's a little bit about, uh, what's going on here today. Otherwise things are going good. Oh, uh, my mom and my grandma, um, will both be getting their first, uh, COVID shot, uh, next week on Tuesday. So I'm really excited about that for them. Um, going to bring some stuff home with me to train. That should be fun. I've done that in the past. I bring home some dumbbells and kettlebells and bands and stuff. And I can train at my mom's. And um, her dog, though, gets really upset when I do push-ups. Like, I think he thinks that I'm falling on the floor. So he, like, comes over and tries to, like, nudge me as I'm doing push-ups, you know. So <laughs> it should be fun. Uh, but, you know, maybe I'll take a picture of Mosley when I'm home. So my mom has a, uh, a cream chow, like a chow chow, the dog, the dog with the purple tongue. Eh. Um, his name is Mosley like Mr. Mosley from Downton Abbey because my mom is a stereotypical 70 year old woman, <laughs> but she loves it. I took her to see that movie when it came out. We had a little girls night and I took her to Downton Abbey. So, um, and she loved it. Um, but yeah, but anyway, so that's what's going on here. Um, I saw that Chantel went into DC media's live and told her to stop reacting to her, uh, you know, or else kind of a thing. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but anyway, um, that's not it for the drama. I think today I'm not really, I haven't been up on the drama today. I've been so busy, like haven't been able to catch up on it. So, um, but anyway, I hope you guys all had a fantastic Friday, have a fantastic weekend. If you're anywhere, uh, in Texas and you guys get snow, please stay in your house. Like, um, it was really awful. So a lot of people died this week in Texas in the pileups that they were having, like in the Austin area and Fort Worth area or wherever it was. Um, I forget. And I feel rude that I don't know. Maybe Fort Worth, I feel. Although it could have been Austin too. Um, Houston is supposed to get snow, which is crazy for Houston. But um, so just stay safe wherever you are. If you are in the Midwest and you're in this deep breeze, make sure that you don't go outside unless you absolutely have to. And oh, by the way, the positivity rate for COVID-19 in the state of Wisconsin today is 3.4%, um, which is uh, which is really good. It's um, it, We've been trending downward since November. Um, the last four months have been really good. 
Um, we are, I think, 10th right now in the nation for vaccinations. Um, and it's not really a vaccination. It's just like a flu shot. Like a, it's not an inoculation. It's not like, oh, you can never get COVID. It's not one of those things. It's more like the flu shot. So the um, for the COVID shot, we're, I think, 10th in the nation right now. So um, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. It's a small state, though. We only have five and a half million people or so. So it um, shouldn't take us too long to get through all the high-risk folks and um, you know, and then get on to the general population and stuff. So, um, I have some thoughts though about the whole, we're going to be wearing masks forever. No, we're not like, stop saying that, you know? <laughs> so, um, but that's for a different day guys. So anyway, um, thanks for hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. Um, like the fancy YouTubers say, if you like this channel, go ahead and like, comment and subscribe. Um, click the bell. So, you know, every single time that I post, um, otherwise, uh, a couple of channels that I like to follow, obviously Shakara Transformations, my girl, love her, uh, Pulpy Syntax, um, as well. That's my guy. Love him. Um, you know, and then who else, yeah, um, who else do I do? Young, dumb, honey bun. She's pretty funny too. Um, and then I do file Jamie French. Um, she's a makeup artist. She makes my life better. Um, she's so funny. She's so funny. Those are just a couple of channels that I like to follow. So if you don't follow them, go follow them. They're, they're fantastic. So. Have a great weekend, everyone. I will see you guys again, uh, hopefully on Monday. Like I said, I might have to sneak out to my car and vlog or like go drive around and vlog. Yeah, so my mom doesn't know. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.